what he's done his whole life. He has admired and befriended construction workers on countless job sites. But it has been a new and profound experience for him and for me to see these stoic machinists and steel workers come to him with a tear in their eye and thank him for being the only person willing to go to the mat for them, for their jobs, for their families, and for their futures. To the hardworking men and women across America and here tonight, you are the reason my father fights with all of his heart and all of his might. You are the reason he ran for president in the first place, and you are the reason he is going to keep fighting for four more years. One evening in early February of 2018, we were in the Oval Office with my father's top economic advisors and the President was pushing to keep the promise he made to renegotiate the bad trade deals that had gutted millions of middle class jobs. Most of his advisors argued that the economy was so strong following our historic tax and regulatory cuts that it didn't make sense to risk rocking the boat. After the meeting, as I walked with my father back towards the residence, he said, you know, the reason this has never been done before is because our leaders haven't had the guts. When the economy is good, they settle for good, and when things are bad, they don't have the will or ability, so they kick the can until it's someone else's problem. He was right. If my father didn't take on these fights, no one would. In the months that followed, President Trump refused to settle for a good deal. He wanted a great deal, and ultimately, that is exactly what we got. I remember each time he was updated on the progress of the new trade deal with Mexico and Canada, he would say, don't let down those dairy farmers I met in Wisconsin. I don't want them to like this deal. I want them to love it. <laughs> Today, in the midst of this unprecedented global pandemic, it's more clear than ever that our president was absolutely correct to take on trade when he did and bring our jobs, our factories, and our life-saving medicines back to the USA. As our nation endures this grave trial, I pray for the families who are mourning the loss of a loved one, for those who are battling COVID-19, and for the first responders and the healthcare heroes who remain on the front line of this fight the grief, sorrow, and anxiety during this time is felt by all. I've been with my father and I've seen the pain in his eyes when he receives updates on the lives that have been stolen by this plague. I have witnessed him make some of the most difficult decisions of his life. I sat with him in the Oval Office as he stopped travel to Europe. I watched him take the strongest, most inclusive economy in a lifetime the lowest unemployment in a half century, and the highest wage increase for working families in decades, and close it down to save American lives. It is why our president rapidly mobilized the full force of government and the private sector to produce ventilators within weeks, to build the most robust testing system in the world, and to develop safe and effective treatments, and very, very soon a vaccine. My father isn't deterred by defeatist thinkers. The word impossible, well, it only motivates him. Donald Trump rejects the cynical notion that this country's greatest achievements are behind us. He believes that nothing is beyond our reach and that the best is yet to come. I have seen all of my life, how my dad believes in the potential of each individual. Earlier this evening, we were all inspired by the incredible testimony of Alice Johnson, a great grandmother who was sentenced to life in prison for a first time nonviolent drug offense. I was with my father when he decided to commute Alice's life sentence. 
Together we watched Alice leave prison after nearly 22 years. As she ran into the arms of her family and they celebrated a joyful reunion, my father got very quiet. I could see the emotion on his face. After a long silence, he looked at me and said, imagine how many people there are just like Alice. From that point on, he became a voice for those who had been unfairly silenced in our prison system. President Trump rectified the disparities of the 1994 Biden crime bill that disproportionately hurt African Americans. Against all odds, he brought together Republicans and Democrats and passed the most significant criminal justice reform of our generation, and we're just getting started. My father did not campaign on this issue. He tackled this injustice because he has a deep compassion for those who have been treated unfairly. More than rhetoric and political prose, the ability to build consensus and achieve bipartisan success will help heal our country's racial inequities and bring us forward together. President Trump is advancing the American values of work and family. Four years ago in Cleveland, I said President Trump would deliver for working women. Last year, over 70% of all new jobs were secured by women. Four years ago, I told you my father would focus on making childcare affordable and accessible. In President Trump's first term, we secured the largest ever increase for childcare funding, giving more than 800,000 low-income families great childcare at a cost they can afford. As part of Republican tax cuts, in 2019 alone, our child tax credit put over $2,000 into the pockets of 40 million American families. <laughs> Democrat politicians recently introduced a plan to increase the child tax credit. Yet when I was fighting less than three years ago at the president's direction to get Congress to double the child tax credit, not a single Democrat voted to pass the law. We got it done anyway. Four years ago, I promised that President Trump would 